Alright, so getting ready to shoot this video and do some field recording, I switched on my recorder and realized that it wouldn't turn on, so I'm like, oh no, the batteries must be dead. I tried switching out the batteries, no luck. I'm like, this is the second recorder. If you remember, I had this guy here, the DR-07, totally died on me. So I'm like, this is the second Tascam recorder that's gonna just outright die on me. I notice on the side of the recorder, there's this little hold button. And that switched on. So I switch it off, boom, my recorder works. So I say, hey, let me go make sure that didn't happen to my old recorder. I guess now I've got two field recorders. And not only are you gonna want a really good field recorder, but you're also gonna want one of these. This is a windscreen by Movo. It's kind of the best one that I've used but it really guards all that wind sound, especially if you're shooting by the coast or if you're recording ocean sounds. There's a ton of wind on the ocean and on bodies of water because there's not a lot of trees around. So make sure you get a windscreen. recently just asked me, hey, I'm getting a field recorder, what should I go out and record? And I always talk about either recording nature or weather because you get some really unpredictable sounds. For instance, right now I'm in a bunch of reeds and it's something I would have never thought to sample, but if you just stand here and listen, they're all sort of gently hitting against each other because of the wind and it makes this really natural, cool sound that I wouldn't have otherwise found unless I came out here to find it. Going out to field record is not only a great way to get some awesome sample source material, but it's a cool way to just get some time out in nature, away from the studio, do some meditation, and you're kind of forced to be quiet while you're taking field recordings, so it's a really easy way to just take it all in and take a break. Alright, so we've got a ton of great sample material, and now it's time to take it back to the studio and see what we got. All right, so it has been a few days since we went out and did those field recordings and I got a lot of stuff back and I uploaded it all from the recorder onto the computer. And I put a bunch of unprocessed files into my user library. And usually what I like to do when I grab a bunch of field recordings is to find something that's gonna be the ambience or something that's really gonna kick off the track. And for this track, I found something um, interesting which was this sound of geese flying in. Let's hear what that sounds like. And what actually happens is it actually sounds like there's a filter on this audio file because the geese start from really far away and then get closer and closer so the sound gets brighter and brighter. And there's also the sound of the water splashing in the background and it creates a really nice overall texture for something that can kind of be an introduction that can kind of set the ambience and start the tune. Now of course this doesn't really have any musical or rhythmic value right now, it's just kind of a ambient loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my user library and I found something from the vacation sound pack. The ceramic seats actually make a really decent percussion to go along with this. So I took the one ceramic seat sample and I put a delay on it so it has some rhythmic value. And then I dialed in some ping pong delay. I took it in two tracks, panned them each left and right and transposed one of them up a little bit so that it has a little bit of a wider sound. Now sometimes when I'm creating music, I'll use a lot of MIDI instruments, and other times I just totally abandon that, and I like to use a lot of samples, a lot of recorded instruments, and for this track, that's what I wanna go with. So I'm actually gonna record a simple guitar loop to go with this track. So I'm just gonna play in time, and I'm gonna play along with the geese track, along with the percussive track. Okay, so I am gonna quantize that loop just to get it all in time, but I'm gonna use the complex pro quantize mode to get it to sound closest to natural. So now if I play that loop along with what we have already.
which is beautiful by itself, but I also want to add another layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this same clip and I'm going to copy it into a new track and then transpose it up an octave. For this, because I want a very clear higher octave, I'm going to choose the tones mode for warping. So when we play them together, it sounds like this. And what you sort of end up with is this very hypnotic, acoustic, yet processed sound. Because I could have easily played it up the octave, but I like to do the warping and the transposing in the computer so that it sounds slightly digitally manipulated. So this is also where having an organized user library comes in handy because I'm able to pull from a lot of my other field recordings. And I found this other sample from the vacation pack called Auto Harp Wonk. And I called it that because it's not a really like clean strum. It's got a really interesting pitch envelope to it. Like you strummed it just a little too hard. And I'm just going to drop that into a sampler and play it like an instrument on the push. So sticking along the lines of using real instruments, I know that I'm also going to want a really gritty bass sound. So what I'm going to do is grab my electric bass, plug it in and just play a simple, simple bass line. Ableton also has some really powerful presets for guitars and bass guitars. So I'm using a combination of my basic audio processing chain that I always use and also Ableton's amp and cab. So for now we can start adding in a couple different MIDI layers like some drums. And I'm going to dig into my user library again, grab some of my kalimba percussion noises. And one free sample pack that I'm always pulling from for percussion and drums is Break Selection by Sample Magic. So I think that's a really cool sample that I can use as a build up. Of course I'm going to need a really cool backbeat, so I'm going to pull from that same sample back and see what I can find. Let's throw that one in there and see how it sounds. I'm really happy with the way that sounds and you can kind of see here how easy it is just to build up a track in Ableton and get all your pieces together, but this is far from done. Now what I need to do is the arranging and the sound design. So I've already been doing a little bit of mixing, you know, with the panning left and right and with adding some effects, but I really need to go in, add some risers, think about where everything is sitting in the mix and put the arrangement together. So if you click the link down below, you'll be able to download this finished track. Let me know what you think and let me know if you have any questions about the production of this track. If you enjoy live electronic music performances, tutorials, and free sound packs, click that subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.